giving us a larger screening of magnetic field here. Okay. The next thing I want to look at is essentially the difference in geometries uh, of the rings modeled in each case. In the left-hand case here, this is, would correspond to a superconducting ring with a finite slit through it, where we could model this with the, the normal B equals zero boundary condition. And this is a flux focuser used for squid mag magnetometry and other applications where you want to have a higher magnetic field. And if we have a, a continuous superconducting ring, we can model this depending on whether we cool it in a magnetic field or we cool it in zero magnetic field and then switch on the magnetic field. So the A equals zero boundary condition will give us zero flux. We can see from Stokes' theorem where the total flux through the superconducting ring is given by the surface integral of B dot dA which is the same as the line integral of A dot DL where uh, gamma is some path around the superconducting ring. So this boundary condition gives us zero flux inside of the ring here. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at this in uh, superconducting ring in axial symmetry. which is a more realistic simulation that we did previously here. So this is our geometry. And once again, we have an air region. Now, in axisymmetry, the z-axis corresponds to the axis that runs along the horizontal bottom edge of the model here. The end caps are assigned a tangential, zero tangential field. So the bottom I have zero tangential field, which is the left end cap. Now the top of the model has zero tangential field. this boundary here. The side, this is the cylindrical boundary of the model. This boundary here. And I'm giving it a constant vector potential flux function, Ra, whose curl gives us uh, the magnetic field. The superconductor now is a, a boundary of constant Z. And initially, we're starting off with zero normal flux on the superconducting ring. So to begin with, this is a, uh, going to be a superconducting flux focuser. OK. You can see that the, the flux lines are, appear to be greater towards the edge of the model here than in the central region. This is due to the fact that there is more flux as we go out along a radial distance because of the area, essentially, of the circular region here. Now, if we look at the magnetic field along the axis of the superconductor, I'll make a contour plot of the Z component field along the axis of the superconductor. And this is the same. It's, there's only the Z component field along the Z axis. And you can see here where the superconducting ring is we have an increase of the flux density inside of the ring. So it's acting as a flux focuser. OK. Now I'm going to change the boundary condition on the superconducting ring. And I'm going to give it the zero fuel cooled boundary condition. And let's resolve this problem. So now that we have the flux is expelled from the superconducting ring, and if I make a 
component a z component plot along the axial contour once again I can see that the field now is reduced the z component field now is reduced at the center of the ring also I want to look at a contour a radial contour from the center of the ring to the edge of the ring So let's look at a radial contour here, and I'm going to make this as straight as I can, almost the center. I'm going to change the direction of the contour. I want it to start from the center and go to the edge of the ring. And we can plot the magnetic field, the Z component field, along the edge here. One thing you can see is the Z component field, it actually changes sign. So it's roughly two tesla at the very center of the ring, and then approximately at the 10 centimeter mark, we have that the field, the Z component field is zero, where it becomes negative here. And you're always going to have some sharp variation closer to the, to the very edge uh, of the ring or the disk or whatever you're modeling here, so that you're always going to have sharp uh, rapidly changing fields close to any edge here. So this, if you wanted to design a magnetic shield with a region of zero Z component field, you would look for the nodal point in the ring. You could put your, if you put your sensor at this region, and it was your sensor was also p arranged where it would measure zero radial field. Then you would have uh, essentially perfect screening of an external noise field. 